Hey everyone. Today I want to talk about different types of scroll saw blades. I see this question come up a lot on Facebook groups and uh, you know whenever we're talking about using scroll saw, doing scroll saw projects and cutting different things. I want to talk about different types of brands, teeth per inch, blade geometry, and uh, some of the different types of blades and shapes that are out there. The first thing you want to consider when you're looking at a blade is probably the size. You know, so we typically talk about blades in terms of a blade number. You know, a number three is a certain size, a number seven would be bigger, a number one is going to be smaller than a number three. Another consideration is going to be your teeth per inch. Teeth per inch, more teeth per inch are going to give you a smoother finish than fewer teeth per inch, but you're going to have a harder time cutting on thicker wood if you have a lot of teeth in there. For teeth per inch, you can think about it like the number of teeth on a circular saw blade if you're cutting boards or ripping lumber. More teeth per inch can give you a finer finish, but it's more difficult to evacuate the chips that are coming out of there. So when you're cross-cutting, there's a lot of grain to cut through. For a cleaner finish, you usually have more teeth per inch or more teeth on your saw blade. For ripping, there's typically less grain. You're cutting through the grain, so you want to remove material quicker to get a finer finish. That doesn't translate exactly over into the scroll saw blades, but it's something you can consider. Whenever you're doing really thin work, you want to have uh, more teeth per inch because fewer teeth per inch on a very thin piece can cut and cause tear out, chipping, things like that. Whenever I'm cutting hardwoods or very thick woods, I'm go typically going to use a skip tooth blade or uh, some variation on the skip tooth, something that has m far fewer teeth per inch, and I can show you a few examples here. One of the most common features you'll notice on scroll saw blades is you may find a reverse blade. Reverse blades typically have the same geometry as whatever type of blade if you're using a number three blade, for example, that's not skip tooth, and it's going to have teeth, you know, coming all the way down. Uh, a reverse blade is going to have the last few teeth at the bottom actually pointing up. And uh, the idea there is to have a clean cut inside the wood on the upstroke. And that's supposed to give the bottom of your workpiece a finer finish, reduce the need for sanding or something like that. Another less common type of blade geometry you might see is a crown tooth. The crown tooth blades have, uh, it basically looks like two teeth facing each other um, in repetition. And these can cut pretty quickly. They cut both on the up and the down stroke throughout the length of the blade, but they're not going to leave as nice of a finish on the outside, the top and the bottom. So, you know, these might be good if you're planning on sanding heavily whenever you're doing it. I've used them for some intarsia projects before where I know I'm going to have to sand all the edges, but it's not something I would probably want to use for fine fretwork. The last type of blade, and these can be a little bit uh, contentious depending on who you talk to, is the spiral blades. The spiral blades are basically like a, almost like a crown tooth blade, but they're um, twisted around. So the teeth are pointing in every direction. They cut on the upstroke to downstroke. You can cut to the left, you can cut to the right, forward, backwards, whatever. Um, they rarely give you as fine of a finish or as straight of a cut as a regular flat blade, but in certain situations you can't use a flat blade. You know, my saw has a 22 inch throat. Um, that's on the bigger end of normal saws. I know there's some that go up to 30 or more, but uh, typically you'll find probably a 16 or a 20 or a 22. Those are pretty normal. And uh, while those are all pretty good sizes, let's say you want to work on a piece that's 20 by 32 or 40 by 40. You can't do that whenever you're using a regular flat blade because you're going to run into the back at the throat there. And it does happen. So you often see people using spiral blades for very large portraits um, or things like that. Large, you couldn't use it for large fretwork pieces too. Um, again, I tend to prefer to uh, work on fretwork pieces that fit inside of the throat of my saw because I like using flat blades, uh, very fine flat blades when I'm doing fretwork.
Now that we've talked about some of the different information about blades and why you might want to choose them, I'm going to go through some demonstration of different blades on a couple different types of wood. I've got a thin hardwood that's eighth inch mahogany, a thicker hardwood that's about three quarter inch maple, and a plywood that's just some three quarter inch uh, veneer ply from Home Depot. I'm going to cut it with different blades and show you the results. The first blade I'm going to use today is an Olsen number no. 5 reverse blade. I'm going to cut the 3 quarter inch plywood and then the 3 quarter inch maple and finally the 8 inch mahogany. This is a blade that I use a lot. You can find them easily in woodcraft or other woodworking supply stores and I think they do a good job on all but the thickest hardwoods. You can see there's not a lot of sanding that's going to be required and it leaves a nice finish. The main reason why I wouldn't want to use this blade is when I'm cutting thicker hardwoods it's going to leave scorch marks often in the tight turns or in really in any kind of area. It can't clear the waste out. There's not enough gullet space in between the teeth and so you're going to leave burn marks which are not a big deal. You can sand them away but sometimes um, if you're doing a lot of production or a lot of fine fret work it can be a challenge or really just a pain to sand all that away. So that's where I would off and switch over to maybe the next type of blade. The blade that's probably the most common for me is a Flying Dutchman uh, Skip Tooth Reverse. These do a great job with, for me, just about anything but the very thinnest single stack cut. So if I'm cutting 8th inch Baltic Birch or something like that, I'm probably not going to go for this blade. But in general, if I'm cutting all but the very thickest hardwoods, uh, stack cuts, uh, you name it. I think these things do a fantastic job and they're inexpensive. I usually buy them from Mike's Wood Shop or Workshop or whatever it's called. Um, and you can see whether it's on the plywood, on the three quarter inch maple, or even down to the eighth inch mahogany, it doesn't leave a lot to be sanded. It doesn't scorch. Um, I think these things are fantastic and I can't say enough good things about them. So now I'm going to talk about sort of a, a combination of really three different blades. The Olsen Mock Blade, the Olsen Precision Ground or PGT Blade, and the Pegasus Modified Geometry Blade. Uh, all of these are kind of a super skip and uh, I use them in, in similar, uh, similar situations. But I think for me the Olsen Mock Blades are really nice. Uh, it's the one, the first one you see the picture here. They have really wide gullets, uh, very few teeth, and if you're cutting larger hardwoods, thicker hardwoods, or hard hardwoods, these things will uh, eat right through it. You know, if you take your time and let the blade do the work, there's very little scorching, very little dust build up. I've used these on compound cutting some inch and a half thick um, blanks and those are really just an all-around favorite for me for all but the very finest work in the hardest woods. I also don't like using these in very thin woods uh, unless you're stack cutting as you'll see across all of these. Uh, first you see the Olsen mock and then you see the results of the precision ground blades and then the Pegasus modified geometry. They all leave uh, a lot of splintering on the 8th inch mahogany but uh, I'm a big fan of the Olsen Mock Blades. The only reason I don't use these for just about everything but the thinnest stuff is they're more expensive than the Flying Dutchman's that I tend to use. And in everything but the very thickest or very hardest woods, um, I don't think they do a significantly better job based on the price point than the Dutchman Blades. The next blade I want to talk about is a Pegasus Skip Tooth Reverse. Um, Pegasus blades get a lot of rave reviews on a lot of groups and elsewhere on the internet, and uh, I do like the modified geometry blades, but I haven't had good experience with um, many of the other blades. I'm not a big fan of these. You can see they, they cut fine on the plywood. Uh, they do a good job on the plywood, but they leave a lot of waste material in the uh, thicker hardwood, and they splinter a lot still on the thinner hardwood. So th given what you've seen with the other blades and what they can do, this is not a blade that I think I would ever really reach for. Finally, I just want to show some of the newer scrollers or maybe people who haven't used spiral blades before. Um, 
the results for with a spiral blade are never going to be very clean it's never that's just not the way spiral blades work but you can do things with spiral blades that you just can't with flat blades um as you probably know spiral blades can cut in every direction and that makes it possible to cut pieces that don't fit inside the throat of your saw or that have really really fine fretwork um so they're something that they're not going to give clean lines, but they have a purpose and they do have a use. Uh, I don't usually use them, but I have a variety of sizes so that I can when I need to. Well, hopefully some of these pictures and some of this explanation can give you an idea of what type of blades you can use for which types of projects. I hope you find it useful. Thanks.